So we're just wrapping up the third week of the Average to Savage training program. Uh, and at the start of the video, I just wanted to address what is reps in reserve. How's everyone going? This is Selwyn from Witch Strength, uh, and we're talking about week three of the Average to Savage 2.0 training vlog. Uh, like usual, I'll leave links below uh, for the program as well as the Stronger by Science website. Uh, two fantastic resources, highly recommend checking them out. Uh, before we get into uh, wrapping up the week, I wanted to talk about uh, reps and reserve. So in, in the Average to Savage training program, uh, reps and reserve is the auto-regulation uh, feature that they use in order to gauge progress and mitigate stress. Uh, I just want to take a couple of minutes to talk about what uh, reps and reserve is if you choose to do the program yourself. Uh, so basically what reps and reserve is, uh, is how many reps you have after you complete a set. So for example, I'm doing five, I just finished up with uh, doing five squats. Uh, right as soon as I rack the weight or right before I rack the weight, I ask myself how many more reps do I think I can do? If I can do two more reps, that's a two RIR. If I could have done four more reps, that's a four IRR. Uh, it's a simple way to gauge uh, stress levels on a per set basis, um, as well as give you a, a way to auto regulate that stress. So much like uh, RPE, where it's a way for you to self analyze your stress levels for that working set, uh, the RAR is just another way to look at that. It's just the tool in the toolkit for you to use in order to gauge that stress during your workload. So why should you pay attention to RAR? Uh, if you're not doing the program, you don't, you don't really have to, but it is another helpful tool to have uh, when you are training and trying to understand where your body is, how your body's reacting to the stress of that day. Uh, we all know that stress uh, isn't just from a workout. If you didn't get a good night's sleep, if you're have stressful jobs, stressful life situation, literally any other point in your life where there's stress, that's going to affect uh, your performance in the gym and it's going to have some different outcomes as to how it manifests itself when you're training. Uh, and there was one study that actually showed that self-reported subjective measures of intensity were actually more helpful and more accurate at gauging an individual's performance uh, than when they use objective measures to gauge their performance. So even the science kind of helps back up uh, using self-regulation and self-reflection on how your training intensity is and it's not something that's going to happen overnight uh, even today even with training with RPE even with training with RAR uh, for a couple of weeks now it still takes time to get used to uh, but over time you kind of build this mental repository of how you felt after each set but you're only going to able to build that up after you've spent time getting them right and getting them wrong and figuring that out. Uh, the good thing is that the science isn't exactly definitive on like, this is the exact rep range you need to hit. If I get four and I don't get five, then the workout is completely useless. No, it's a, it's a range of RAR, even RPE. As long as you fall within this range, you're going to get similar effects. Uh, now, there's between one and five. Obviously, you're going to have huge, like slightly different outcomes. But when you're talking about if I got a two or a three RAR, uh, slightly less important than actually considering what that you're in that two to three range rather than if I'm at a one or a five. So how can RAI help you build some muscle? Uh, so basically most of the research points to it will say that um, when you go over a five RIR, it's not that efficient. It'll work, but again, it's going to take you a lot longer to get to where you need to go. So it, that's not really that big of an issue. Um, when we go down all the way to zero, i.e. training to failure, on a set-by-set -set basis, that's huge. Uh, so that's probably gonna be the best return for your time if you only have one set to do. If I only ever wanted to work out once for that week, then train to failure is gonna be great because you're gonna have huge returns, but the, the negative of that is you're gonna have huge uh, stress levels and high stress levels from that. So you're not gonna be able to recover as well in order to back that up and continue adding volume because uh, muscle growth and hypertrophy is dictated by volume rather than overall intensity on the bar. Uh, so we hit that uh, sweet spot of one to five RIR. So that's both effective and sustainable for the long run. So what are the drawbacks with using RIR in your training? Uh, there's really only two that I could find and I think are useful or in any, in any means. Um, the first being that when you get into higher RIR ranges, it starts to become less uh, accurate as to how you can judge that. Much like RPE training, if you're trying to figure out what's a one RPE versus a three RPE, because the effort level is so low, it's gonna be really difficult because it's you're kind of in that warm-up set. 
like if I curl my arm up without any weight, is that like a negative RPE? Because it really doesn't take that much effort. So as we get to those higher numbers in the IRI, the RIR scale, um, it'll get slightly harder to gauge its accuracy and really get a good state, good self-indication of where you are. But because in the real world, we're never really training in programs that tell us to have a 10 RIR. Uh, I don't think it's really relevant, but it is one of those drawbacks that might you might have to think about if there are programs that show you doing sets with 10 RIRs, might have to look at a different program there. Uh, the other drawback uh, is, I mentioned earlier, is that it's gonna take some time to get used to the self-assessment. And I think that's fine. I think that's a, I think that's only a drawback if you're only ever gonna train for a week, but if you're gonna be training for years upon years, over those years, you're gonna develop this sense of self and this sense of exertion. So how does it differ from RPE or rate of perceived exertion? Um, and that's another populous self-assessment tool that I like to use as well, basing uh, reps versus weight. So with RPE, you're looking at, could I have added more weight on the bar and how difficult did this feel uh, at that weight, at that rep range? With RIR, we're kind of looking at, could I have done more reps with the with this amount of weight on the bar? We're not too concerned with uh, weight, we're more concerned with reps. And with RPE, we're more concerned with weight on the bar. And that's kind of how I like to delineate the two. Um, based on the programming you're trying to do. I think RPE is more suited to like strength training and RIR is more suited to hypertrophy training. Uh, and hopefully that helps you delineate between the two. That's how I personally do it. It might not be 100% right, uh, but I think it's a good basic way to, to see the difference between the two. Even though I do think you should still be kind of using both uh, all the time, even if you're not recording it, at least take mental note of it after each set. That way it builds that mental accumulation of repeating this exercise so that you know in the future what an RPE seven versus a six versus an eight feels like, because you have just mentally noted that, and over time you're gonna get better at doing that. So the actual third week of training went pretty well. I think um, the first couple of weeks of any program are gonna be more an acclimatization phase to the workload, to the exercise structure, to everything about the program. Uh, third and fourth week, you're kinda of gonna get into the swing of things and really see some good results there. Uh, this isn't really any different by the third week I think the weights are lining in just right. The cool thing with the program is, as you perform the previous week, it's gonna start uh, fixing up the weights and the recommendations uh, later on in the week. So it's kind of this, it has this inbuilt feedbacks so that you're, it's not prescribing you a set line to perform uh, week in, week out, which if you deviate from that line, you're struggling to get back to that line. It, it readjusts the line for you. So you're constantly triangulating uh, where you need to be each week upon week, which I think is an amazing feature of the, the Excel. And so with that, we're kind of falling right into the uh, prescribed rep and set ranges, which I think is awesome because it means that we've dialed in and we're actually performing uh, with weights that are both efficient and optimal and allow me to train a little bit longer and get a bit more hypertrophy stimulus than I was with the uh, strength template that I was doing in the past. So it's kind of coming, It's it feels like it's coming all together. The movements are feeling great. I think we're showing some good progress uh, after the first two weeks of uh, settling into the program. I, I, I love the flexibility of the program so far. Uh, nothing is really standing out as being uh, wrong. It doesn't feel too fatiguing, and that's because it does have that auto-regulation feature. So we had some um, really higher weights that I thought I could handle based on the one rep maxes, but didn't turn out that way. And then some other weights that I was just like repping out for like 10 sets. Uh, week two brought that in, and now we're in week three. We're kind of just staying within those upper and lower threshold limits. I think that's a great uh, feature of the program is that auto-regulation algorithm that's changing the weights as you enter in that data. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll flick over to some uh, training footage and some voiceovers. So you guessed it, starting off with some more squats. Um, you'll notice here I'm using some flat shoes. I've been trying to see what happens if I f switch over to uh, flat shoes rather than heeled squat shoes. Uh, just because of the way that weight distribution is with the safety squat barbell, I think I prefer it with the heel shoe um, rather than squat shoe. Uh, it just gives a little bit more uh, knee travel forward and less uh, strain on the ankle on that Achilles tendon there. Uh, but your mileage may vary, so try them both out and see which one works better for you. Uh, moving on now to some push presses. Um, again, this is just day to day, so I didn't bother changing shoes in between each set. And I'm really enjoying the higher rep work with the push presses. I think it's really helping uh, solidify the midsection and the core 
in order to hold that weight overhead, which should help uh, transfer through over to the regular overhead press where it's a bit more strict. Uh, you notice not a lot of shoulders actually get used in the push press. It's mainly a leg drive and a hip drive. Here we have some sandbag throws over the back. And again, this just highlights the flexibility of the average Savage program. Um, you can kind of throw in whatever you want um, here and there. So if you do have some specific tr exercises that you do like doing, like here, some sandbag throws, this will be a great program. Uh, very, It allows versatility. You, you do get options to add in a lot of exercises if you want. Um, and then just do whatever set rep scheme you want. Uh, just because we do have I'm limited to the 100 pound sandbag here in the gym, so I just go for reps rather than trying to do anything else really. And the one thing that's good with the sandbag throws is, is it does help with that explosive hip hinge, uh, much like a kettlebell swing, uh, except it's probably going to be a little bit more transfer over through to an atlas stone lift, just because you are in that uh, bent over position trying to pick up an awkward object, which is pretty much the core to atlas stones. Uh, lapping it and then throwing it over the back. Uh, really trying to throw that bag as far back as I possibly can. And again, just some more flexibility here, just with some body weight chin ups. Uh, this will be the version where I rep out the chin ups rather than go for heavy weight. So I'm trying to go for my goal is to be able to do 20 unbroken chin ups by the end of this program. Uh, what I do along the way is sets to. RPE 9, so not quite to failure, but as close as I can to getting there. Here we have some front squats. Uh, I recommend if you do have some squat shoes and some ankle mobility issues to throw on uh, those heeled squat shoes there. That little lift in the heel gives you a little bit extra movement for the, for the knee travel. Um, my cat seems to agree with that statement. Uh, so here we have some dumbbell curls. I've been really focusing on a slow and controlled uh, ascent and descent with the curls. Again, I do it. I am limited with the weights I can use, especially with the dumbbells. We only have a uh, 30 pound pair maximum. So in the meantime, one way to get around uh, limitations with weight is to figure out how to make the lift mechanically disadvantaged. So whether we're increasing time, increasing range of motion, uh, or pausing along the way. So right now I'm focusing on more of a slower controlled tempo with a dumbbell curl and trying to get that full um, range of motion there as well, but mainly focusing on slowing down that tempo, especially on that uh, descent of the lift. So we're not just dropping the weight down, we're focusing on uh, controlling the descent of the dumbbell and you really feel that uh, in the arms as, as you go forward with the set there. So moving on to some conventional deadlifts, um, we're doing some heavy triples here. You notice that the weight uh, isn't as heavy as I typically use, especially when we are in a more powerlifting uh, focused mesocycle, uh, but we are getting a lot more volume here. So again, when you do play around with different goals, uh, this mesocycle's goal is hypertrophy, so we're definitely wanting to drive down on that volume rather than intensity. So a significant decrease in the weights being lifted, but a significant increase in the weights being in the reps being lifted. And playing around here with some close grip incline, uh, I have been enjoying the incline setting on the bench press. It feels like I'm getting a better stretch in the pecs and a little bit longer range of motion. So nothing better, nothing worse, just a nice change of pace there. Uh, some strict overhead pressing now, and again, some more heavy triples. And I think uh, these are looking a lot more stable than they have in the past. And I think that's just because of having that extra volume and that extra uh, time to work on that technique as you put in extra reps. Here we have some reverse lunges with the SS yoke barbell. I'm a fan of using the SS yoke barbell just because it does help uh, balance uh, the weight on the shoulders a little bit better than with a regular barbell. It removes a little bit of the strain by having to externally rotate your shoulders as hard just to keep that back rack position. Uh, it's a little bit more comfortable. Um, it also trains you to keep that more upright position for the lunge, uh, which helps with form there. And here we are wrapping up with some sumo deadlifts. And again, I'm enjoying including the sumo deadlifts. It's a nice change. It feels like I get a nicer stretch in the hips there. Uh, the range of motion definitely feels a little shorter. And we are using the uh, conventional grip just to work more on that grip strength as the weeks go on here. So that'll wrap up the third week of training. Hope you found it helpful, both explaining the RIR and just going over what 
I did for the week, some of the highlights and lowlights. Again, I'll leave links below for Greg Knuckles' uh, program as well as Stronger by Science. Check them out. Um, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the playlist so you don't miss out on uh, the weekly training vlogs and stay up to date with how my training is progressing. Uh, and I'll leave a final overview and rating uh, after the next 14 weeks. Uh, this has been Selwyn from Wind Strength, and remember, a better life through strength.